Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Imagine with Kira podcast. I am Kira Bixler You're here if you're new. Um, and today I'll be interviewing a very different guest than what I've been doing for the past, I don't know, 25 episodes or so. Um, I will be interviewing our new, very recently crowned, Miss North Carolina's team. Um, she is stepping into the shoes of Hanley House, who is now Miss America's teen. Um, and so our new Miss North Carolina team will get to live out the rest of the year um, representing the great state of North Carolina. And we actually have a lot in common. Her service initiative is also about literacy. Um, so that already is great. We both love the color orange um, and I cannot wait to meet her and introduce her to the world for kind of the first time here. So it should be very exciting and I will catch you all when she hops on. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Imagine with Kira podcast. I'm joined by a very special guest today, and I'll have her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Annika Schneider, and I'm the newly crowned Miss North Carolina's teen as of two days ago. Yay, that's so exciting. I cannot wait to dive into what that experience was like for you. But um, first off, I'd love to know how and why your journey in the Miss America opportunity started. So I've been a Carolina princess and in the junior pageant system. I don't know if you remember that when that was a thing, but I've been in that since I was like six years old. So always been a part of the Miss America opportunity. And I'm so grateful for how it shaped me into the young woman that I am. But whenever I got around to my junior year of high school, I remember the Miss North Carolina competition had just happened in June. I saw the winners and I was like, Ugh. I really want to be a part of it again because I had kind of taken a break. You know, I aged out of Carolina Princess stuff and everything. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to jump back in, jump back in, won my first local as the Stanley County's outstanding team then. And then last January was crowned as Metrolina's teen. And the first year that I went to States, I was top 11. And then this year I got the preliminary evening gown award, won a wellness award, and then was third runner up. That's awesome. And your evening gown is gorgeous, by the way. I've seen it on thank Instagram. You. I, love, I it. love the orange. It's just beautiful on you. So oh, thank that's you. such a cool journey. And then here you are today. What a twist. Very exciting. Yes, very much a twist. <laughs> <laughs> what I was planning on happening or thinking that was going to happen, but I'm so blessed to be in this position. That's great. And then I was like stalking you on social media a little bit before this, so I knew some background on you. And I noticed that your CSI is literacy focused, right? Yes, well, that's, it is. That's my CSI as well. So I cannot wait to hear oh. about what you've done in literacy, how that started. So I'd love for you to give everybody a rundown on that. Yes. So my CSI is called Read With Me. It is a community service initiative that raises awareness for the educational and therapeutic opportunities that literacy provides. I started that because during the COVID pandemic, I'm a very extroverted person. So being not being able to be around people was really, really hard for me. I was also just struggling kind of in my personal life. And I found reading again, and it kind of turned my life around. I was able to kind of, you know, take myself out of the chaotic state that we we're all living in. And I wanted everyone to be able to have that space that I believe that literacy provides as well as, as well as the educational opportunities that it has afforded me throughout my life. I'm on a full tuition scholarship right now at my university. So reading has definitely helped me in all aspects of my life, but especially the mental health one. So that was really important for me to convey to my community. I did that through bookmark contests. I hosted book clubs for preteens as well as adults. I visited several schools in Stanley County as well as the Charlotte area. And I was actually able to give every single class that I went to free books. So that was amazing. I hosted book drives in order to raise over 600 books. I still have some. So we're going to be distributing those since we're still on as teen. But yeah, I just did so much. I'm so proud of everything that I've done. And I'm hoping to, well, actually, I'm not hoping, I'm going to <laughs> write my official book as Miss North Carolina's teen and base it around my journey with reading to kind of help convey the message of Read With Me to the younger classes that I'm able to visit because it's super hard to talk about them or talk to them about how reading can kind of impact your mental health and you don't want to put a damper on it. So it was always hard for me to convey that. I never also had a book that I like, loved to read to all the classes. It was just kind of like, 
whatever I was feeling that day. So I'm definitely going to do that over the next six months. And I'm super excited. That's awesome. Yeah, that's such a great journey. I always love hearing people's stories behind their CSI because it's always very interesting. Um, I'd also love to know about your talent. Your talent costume also is adorable, by the way. Oh, thank you. Uh, But I would love to know like how dance started for you um, and what that journey has been like. Yes. So I think I started dancing around the age of five and I also have a pretty interesting journey with that as well. (laughs) So I danced from like the age of five up until eighth grade and I was a competitive dancer, did competition dance now for like 10 plus years. In eighth grade, I decided that I just didn't really want to dance anymore. I kind of had like a poor experience from the season prior. So I stopped dancing going into my freshman year and then having COVID hit. It was just kind of like a whirlwind. Like my world just completely turned upside down, especially not having dance. Started doing volleyball, which was really weird for me. I was never like a sports person. So that that was an interesting time for two years. And then my junior year, when I decided to go back into pageantry, my parents were like, well, what are you going to do for your talent? I was like, um, I guess I'll just get back in the studio. So got back in the studio and thankfully I fell in love with dance all over again. I love performing now. I love dancing. And I just kind of have to thank the Miss America opportunity for pushing me towards that aspect of my life again, because I'm not really sure what I would be doing if I didn't have dance in my life. I'm on the dance team at my college now. I'm also a cheerleader. So it's definitely afforded me a lot of opportunities. That's great. Yeah, I know a lot of people that that's kind of happened to because of like the COVID period too. So that's a cool Mm -hmm. story. Um, Thank you. Of course. Let's see what else. Oh, that's actually a perfect segue. So I'd love to know about what college has been like, where you are right now, majors, and then also um, what career path you want to go into in the future. Definitely. So college has been amazing. I love it so much. I go to Pfeiffer University, which is a really small private school in my county, actually. So I do live in Stanley County. I'm from Stanley County. I'm only like 30 minutes away from home. So it made the transition for me so super easy. And I love being close to home. Everyone that I graduated with or like went to elementary school with, they're like, we could not be that close to our houses. I was like, I love it. Like, it's not for everyone, but it was for me. And so I'm so happy with the decision that I chose. But I'm here. I'm acclimated. I'm a business management and leadership major. And then I hope to pursue a master's in healthcare administration. I'm also on our campus activities board. I'm planning our winter formal for this Friday. I'm super excited. I'm a fellowship of Christian athletes student leader. I am also in the honors college here. I'm on the cheer and dance team. So super acclimated and involved. And I just love it so much. That's great. How much scholarship money have you earned from your experience? is in the Miss America opportunity. So one thing that made me actually look at Pfeiffer was when I won Miss Stanley County's Outstanding Teen, I was afforded a $2,000 in-kind scholarship to Pfeiffer. And then in cash scholarships, I've gotten a little under $5,000. So it has definitely afforded me the opportunity to even look at Pfeiffer and gain more scholarship money from the university itself. But then also having that cash scholarship money that I'll be putting towards my master's is super, you know, lifting away off me and my parents' chest. So I'm very thankful for the Miss America opportunity for that. That's great. I love, yeah, how everything works out. That's always the best. Um, Let's see what else. Okay, so probably saw this question coming. How was that experience of, I don't know if it was a phone call, a message, and they were like, will you be our teen? Where did you find out that Hamley won? Like kind of walk us through that whole experience for you. Okay, it's pretty unique. (laughs) So I did not watch like the live stream, the teen pageant anything really until finals night finals night someone that I was friends with on Facebook that I've known for a really long time she was live streaming it so I was like okay I'm watching I know she won the double preliminary award like she's gonna do great I was like very hopeful for the outcome it gets down to top five and they call um Texas and then I think it was Oklahoma she wore the blue gown with Mm -hmm. the collar and I was like she just won I literally said to myself, I was like, she just won. Like, she has this. And then it got down top to two. She was in it. And then she won. And I was like, oh, my gosh. My parents and I just all looked at each other. We were like, oh. <laughs> we were like oh, my gosh. That's so crazy. Because North Carolina hasn't had a Miss winner since 1962, I believe. And then a teen winner we've never had. So it was super special. But then one of the friends that I made my first year competing at States calls me like minutes after. And she was like, so you're going to take it? She didn't even say hey to me, nothing. And I was like, what are you talking about? 
like, what, what do you mean? And she was like, first runner up said she wasn't going to take it if she won. And so the second runner up, so it, it's going to you. And I was like, they are not going to do that. Like, stop playing games. Like, we just joked about it the entire time. I was like, that's not happening. I'll believe it when I see it. And that's just the type of person that I am, really. So then night goes on. I'm like, so happy for Hanley. I'm, my parents are kind of like, this might actually be like a possibility. And I'm like, I just don't think so. Next day comes, um, all my friends that went to Miss America are leaving. And so were my local directors. And um, they kind of called me and gave me the heads up. They were like, hey, second runner up was my sister queen. She was Miss Queen City and I was Miss Metrolina's team. She got asked because she was second runner up and I was third. And she was like, I just got asked. So I think they're going to ask you. And I was like, Oh my gosh, my mom just started screaming and my dog started <laughs> barking because he was like so scared of us like screaming and being like, what is going on? So um, then the next day was Monday, Martin Luther King Day. I was at work at a sushi restaurant <laughs> in my hat, like not glam at all, not cute. I get a phone call from Raleigh, I'm like, okay, I probably need to answer that. And it was John Norris, our state team director. And he explained to me how Hanley had won, how first runner up and second runner up. They had both already gotten local titles for this competition season and have a couple more years of eligibility, whereas I was completely out of the team program now and would have had to compete as a miss. So I was offered the job and I was like, oh my gosh, I still got that feeling of like, this is surreal. Like Mm -hmm. this does not feel real at all. I just immediately knew that it was God's timing and God's plan because this couldn't have worked out any other way, like without him and his just, you know, miraculous ways. So I was just very thankful and excited and it just is still very surreal. And it's really weird having the sash across my chest because I never thought that I was going to get that opportunity and it's happening for six months. And I'm just so excited. That's so cool. Yeah. And I love too that, you know, you thought you had aged out and it was never going to happen. And then, you know, I agree. God does work in mysterious ways. Yes, it was, it was crazy. I like had completely removed myself, like went to college, got super involved here and thought that it was just out of the question for me. I was going to wait another year to compete as a miss. So then it just happened. And I was like, what in the world? This is crazy. (laughs) I never thought I was going to hold a team title again. So so it's super special. I love it. I'm trying to think what else I could ask you. Okay. So what was that crowning moment for you? Like, obviously, you know, you got that phone call, so you knew it was coming, but I'm sure it was still exciting. So I'd love to know what that, I guess, evening or day was like. So this past Saturday was actually the Queen City Metrolina pageant, which was where I was supposed to be giving up my title. I had already written my farewell, filmed it, everything. And then that's when I, after I got the call and everything, I knew that that wasn't going to be, you know, very relevant for me anymore. (laughs) So I still went to rehearsals that Friday night and everything. We worked out the opening number and how the show was going to run. And Hanley, we were very fortunate to be able to have her there as Miss America's teen to crown me because we weren't really sure if it was going to happen or not. So we got there, we got ready together, and then we just went out on stage and I was able to be crowned. And everyone was, you know, very full of emotion and excitement. And I told my missus, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to cry. I was like, I just... (laughs) I just don't know. And I was like, I feel like people are going to be disappointed if I don't, because you know, that crowning moment is always just so like emotional, shocking and special. Whereas I've known about it for a week or two now. So they're like, if you don't like, it's okay. And I get out there and I see everyone standing for me and I see the sash across my chest and I just started crying. I was like, Oh my gosh, like I can't believe that this is actually happening to me. So it was very, very special. I just have to thank my local committee for doing an amazing job. They actually hosted a reception for me after, and they had all the candidates run out whenever I was crowned, like it would have been that day had I been crowned. So they made it like as special as possible. It makes me emotional thinking about it, but I just have all the credits and thanks to them for planning that to be so special and to kind of mimic the day and what it would have been like had it been crowned in June. That's so cool. Oh, that's such a sweet story. I love it. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Um, so your experience going to state was very different from all the other girls I've interviewed, obviously. Like, you were crowned quite a bit later due to the circumstances. Um, But I would love to know what advice you have for girls. Um, Maybe they've been competing competing for a while, or maybe this is their first year. Um, What advice would you have for them going into their state competition? 
I would say just put 110% of yourself out there. That's what I did my past year. I cried in my interview, actually, because they asked me about who the most influential person was in my life. And I got to talk about my dad and how he's like the ultimate pageant dad and just so amazing. I also brought up my boyfriend in my interview, like unintentionally. <laughs> they asked me about how I would like help help care for the elderly. And I told them about my boyfriend's mom and how she um, cares for the elderly through healthcare and has like a daycare for the elderly. That way their caretakers can have a break for the day. So I got to talk about that. And I was kind of surprised with myself with how vulnerable I was in the interview because boyfriends are always kind of like a off topic subject in mm-hmm. the Miss America opportunity. And I was like, oh crap, what did I just <laughs> do? And I was like, you know what? It is fine. If they want me with my boyfriend, if they want me without my boyfriend, you know, at least I laid it all out there. So that's my complete advice. If you lay it all out there and show who you truly are, you're going to have no regrets because they're either going to like you and pick you or they're going to not. And then you still walk away with everything that you had before, but so much more from the experience. So you're not going to lose as much as, or as long as you put yourself and your whole heart out there. That's great. Yeah, that's perfect advice. And that's interesting to hear that story because I know that is kind of a taboo topic. So it's so yes. worked out though, clearly. So <laughs> yeah. And then Madison Marsh, like they posted her engagement on the Miss I America know. page. And I was like, oh, I know, I was that's like, oh my God, big I love first. this. Oh yeah. Totally different than in the past. You know, you'd hear about like even Savvy Shields. I think she got engaged like the day after she gave up her crown. So it's a new, yes. it's a new day it really is. I love that for the Miss America opportunity. I do. It's, it's great. It's, sharing more of their lives, which I really appreciate. Yes. Um, Let's see, what are you most excited for for the next six months? Do you have any plans? I have a lot of plans. I think something that I'm super excited about is working with our sponsors. We have amazing sponsors in North Carolina, and I actually got this top from one of our sponsors. They're very, very generous. So to be able to kind of highlight them and just give them the thanks and appreciation that they deserve because they pour so much into this organization, help us out so much with our appearances. I'm super happy to do that for them, as well as making appearances during Read Across America Week. I didn't think that I was ever going to be able to do that as Miss North Carolina's teen. So it's going to be so, so special. You know how special that week is for us oh, literacy yes. girls. It's so fun. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just excited to take advantage of every single opportunity that I'm given. That's so great. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Okay, so you grew up being around the Miss America organization. So I'm curious if you have any pageant like superstitions or traditions or maybe even in the dance world that you've carried over. Oh, yeah, definitely. (laughs) I keep my ring on um, my Miss America ring. It has the pink jewels in it, like the teen Miss Miss America's teen crown. Um, I definitely always keep that on in interviews. And actually, in my state interview, I forgot it. Like I got in the elevator, got downstairs, and I was already running a little late and realized that I didn't have it on. I was like, "Oh, oh, my gosh. So yeah, that was a little nerve wracking, but it ended up being okay. Then also, I have the tradition of doing a color scheme, and I'm not going to disclose whether or not I'm going to do that as a miss, because I don't know yet, but the past two years I've been in States, I did a color scheme, and I absolutely loved it. Last year, it was pink and orange, and the year before, it was blue, so... That's one of my things. Also, I do this in my real life and my pageant life. If I think I do bad at something, that means I did good. So if I felt bad about my talent, felt bad about my onstage question, felt bad about my interview, that means I did good. But if I felt like I did good, I did bad, (laughs) which is really weird. Like every single test that I've ever taken, if I thought I did good, I did terrible. Every single test that I thought I did bad, I did great. And this past weekend, I like felt pretty good about my talent. I was like, okay, that was that was pretty solid. Saw some videos and I was like, oh, okay, (laughs) that's what it looked like. (laughs) So I definitely have those few superstitions, but I am pretty superstitious. That's okay. Yeah, I enjoy the superstitions. I feel like it keeps life a little interesting. So it's fun. Yes. (laughs) Let's see. Okay, so we've gone through that. Um, so I'd love for you to share with everyone where they can follow you on social media, um, or if there's anything else we should be looking at for the rest of this year. 
Yeah, definitely look out for the book and all of my sponsor posts. Also, I just want to promote Miss Puerto Rico's pageant right yeah, now so because exciting. I'm Puerto Rican and I love that they're being included and am so, so happy to see that type of representation up there. I'm actually the first Hispanic Miss North Carolina's teen as well. So this is like a huge deal for me as well as Puerto Rico and I'm just so excited for them. So I wanted to plug them really quick. Be on the lookout for some Miss North Carolina, Miss Puerto Rico partnerships yes, and as well as just keeping up with me through Miss America's teen and C and also my personal social media is Annika Schneider with a underscore I won't try and spell that out right now just type in A-N-N-I-K-A and you should be able to find it awesome and also our YouTube channel it's Miss NC's teen um and we have some great videos up there of Hanley my content's going to be posted super soon and throughout the next six months so I'm very excited for that that's awesome. Well, I'm super excited to watch the next six months of your journey, and I'm so excited for you and this opportunity. Um, yeah, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. You're of so course. sweet. I loved it. <laughs> well, awesome. And I will, I don't know, maybe see you around someday competing as a man. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> awesome. Bye. Bye. Thank you. That is it, you guys. She is awesome, and I'm so glad I got to meet her. Um, if you or someone you know would like to be a guest on the Imagine with Kira podcast, feel free to email me at Imagine with Kira. Kira is K E I R A at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram at Imagine with Kira um, and at Miss Fresno County's Teen. Also, check out my TikTok, which is Blondie Bix, like Bixler, B I X. Um, and please check out my other podcast episodes on YouTube and Spotify by searching Imagine with Kira. Thank you so much again today. Be water, my friend. I am Kira Bixler, and this is Imagine with Kira.